Bitcoin is an unstoppable decentralized network that no government or bank can manipulate. And with its supply cap of 21 million and absolute scarcity, it's the best foreign money in human history. So when I first started creating art, I created art because I wanted to express something that I saw in the world. And what I saw in the world were a bunch of problems that were created by the powers that be, as they say, media interests, the banking industry, just propaganda and social engineering to get people to do things that might not be in their best interest. I think that people really, they need to confront the idea of what is money. Money is almost like this lifeblood that it dictates relationships in society. It dictates someone's level of freedom to do what they want, level of uh, autonomy. It's required for basically everything you do. When Bitcoin came into the equation, I realized something that the money system and more specifically the creation of money is very central to a lot of the problems that we see in today's society. And Bitcoin is a potential solution to that problem and perhaps the best potential solution to that problem. The incentive structure is warped and it becomes profitable for the bankers to do things like enter into endless war campaigns and to be pushing um, certain things on the population that might not be in their best interest. And people would instantly revolt if they had to pay for what the government was actually doing with their money with these tax revenues. But we don't have the average person actually taking a stand for it because the money is not being taken directly from them but it is it is being taken directly from their savings because every dollar printed is a dollar destroyed in saving and that's what inflation is it's a hidden tax on the people and it's robbing them blind because they don't even see it i guess my earliest thing i wanted to be when i grew up had to be a painter and i think that slowly over the course of my life that desire to be a painter kind of got like shaken out of me by the opinions of people around me so like if you say i want to be a painter and then people laugh or people say oh that's cute but what do you really want to be that that type of thing especially from the people around you that can really do a number on you where you you no longer see it as something worth pursuing. You see it as a silly dream because you're a silly kid. When I started thinking about what I was going to do to make money, I was attracted to business. And when it was time to choose graduate school, I chose a science of finance, which is a little bit more specific than just like a, a business school with a major in finance. The first time I heard about Bitcoin was in 2012. One of my best friends at the time. Like, hey, I found out about this, this, this thing. It's like a digital currency and people, at that time, people, people were under the impression that it was uh, untraceable, which it was because you, you couldn't really associate the addresses with, with the identity of someone. If I remember correctly, he was telling me, oh, when I found out about it, it was around $20. And now it's, let's look. And he looked at it, it was around between $30 and $40. So I saw the potential of, wow, we could actually make some money on it, you know? But I, from from someone who's, who had just finished their master's in finance, I looked at it in 2012 and I said, I said, this is a bubble. I eventually, in 2016, I saw a couple of articles about Bitcoin and I looked at the price and I realized the price was at like $600. And I said to myself, wait, this can't be a bubble. Because you know what a bubble does? A bubble blows up and then it pops. And there's no, there's no bubble Ponzi scheme in history with two tops. So I, I said to myself, well, 
My friend showed me Bitcoin and it had gone to $10. Now it's at $600. Ooh, this isn't, this isn't a bubble. This isn't a, a scam, a Ponzi. This, there's, there must be something more to this. So when I found out what Bitcoin was, and I mean, I really started looking into it and realizing what it is. It's a decentralized money system, something that can bring power back to people. It's something that you as an individual hold and control. I, I was inspired to start creating art about it and to create art that specifically shared the message of why Bitcoin is better than fiat currency. So the single most important event that led to me becoming an artist was just after getting my first corporate job at the French liquor company at Pernod Ricard. So I went to the bar with some friends, had a bunch of tequilas, and after having all that tequila, I thought it'd be a real good idea to drive 30 minutes away. And just before I got to my destination, I got pulled over by the cops, got arrested for a DUI. And as a result of that, I had a year with no driver's license. I had a year of random drug and alcohol testing counseling, all that good stuff. It forced me into a situation where I focused on my job. I focused on making sure that I did the best job possible. Spending time in isolation and self-reflection allowed me to reconnect with my inner child, where I started to realize that when I was going through my adolescent years, doing things like drawing, doing things like painting, even writing in my journal were all very important for me to express myself. So I started to retake some of those things. These are things that just kind of naturally happen when I spend more time with myself and I start to connect to who I really authentically am. Also the friends who visited me and spent time with me during that time in my life um, are friends that I still keep contact with till today. And all the friends that I would party with and that weren't there for me when I was unable to party. We don't talk anymore. I left my job at Pernod Ricard at the liquor company in Miami in 2015. I decided that I'm going to take this risk without a plan. I'm going to take the money I have in the bank, liquidate and just say, man, I'm in my twenties. I need to take a risk and stop being miserable. And I need to pursue something that I think is going to make me happy. And I moved to Austin, Texas with the idea that I wanted to pursue entrepreneurship and I wanted to be in a place where I felt like the culture was very creative. When I first sat down and really had a lot of time to reflect and think about what I wanted to do, if I have the freedom to do what I want, you know what, I, I should make art. I was creating art under the pseudonym Pololitics, which actually is like a play on words, obviously, that politics and you throw an extra LOL in there because it's uh, not to be taken seriously, in my opinion. What I realized doing that, there was two important things. One, that I found what I want to do with the rest of my life, which is create visual art and share it with the world. And number two, that finding the problem and sounding the alarm about the problem is not really enough, at least for me. It was a rewarding experience. I was able to connect with like a decent audience, primarily on, on Instagram. Although I was able to create a following for myself and have some people even go as far as to like buy a poster or a t-shirt the reality is that about a year after I started this, I completely ran out of money and I was most of the time isolating myself, working on my art. I was in a state of, of survival that like, I'm constantly watching the clock tick down. So eventually I had to walk away from working on the Pololitics project full time and I had to get a new full-time job. And I experienced this failure, this feeling of, I can do anything I set my mind to. I'm gonna take the risk. Everyone laughed at me. 
Everyone said it wasn't going to work. I, I disregarded what they said. And I said, it's what I want to do with my life and it's going to make me happy. I had to swallow that pride. I had to say, yeah, you know what? I gave it my best. I tried, but I failed. And failing, it did teach me something important. And that the most important lesson for me personally was you can take a risk. You can fail miserably. And if you have the motivation to get back up and try again, you literally have nothing to lose. I felt like I believed in myself. I believed that if I set my mind to something, I could do it. So I worked at this new, new company for about a year and a half. And when I was ready to take the risk again, I did. When I started getting involved in Bitcoin, I started investing in Bitcoin around the same time. As I, I got more and more excited about the prices actually going up and my investment actually working out for me, um, I started a podcast with two friends of mine. It was the Bitcoin FOMO podcast. And the first thing when we set up our YouTube channel was that we need a logo and we needed a banner. So I was like, hey guys, instead of hiring a graphic designer, your boy can do it. So, so I did it. As I was doing both, like on the side, continuing to create designs for the Pololitics project and starting to, to create like graphic designs for for this Bitcoin FOMO podcast. And I, and I started becoming inspired, motivated to use the graphic design skills that I had acquired working on my Pololitics, like my previous project, and use them to create images about Bitcoin. I guess I knew that I was going to devote myself to creating Bitcoin art. And my artwork since then has really focused on Bitcoin, uh, focused on what are the arguments that make Bitcoin better as a store of value than the US dollar. And that's been the core message of my artwork ever since then. But I had decided that I had enough motivation, plan to make something happen. And what I really needed to do to increase the likelihood of me being successful was to move somewhere cheaper. So I decided that I was going to devote myself full time to making Bitcoin art and move to Mexico. I basically, I stopped showing up for work. And then I told the HR guy like a week later, I said, Hey, I'm going to have to turn in my laptop because I'm not working for you guys anymore. So one of the things I realized when setting out to follow my dreams to be an artist is that I didn't really need a lot of things to make it work. I really just needed my willpower, motivation, and a laptop to create my art on. So when I moved here to Guadalajara, I got a little studio apartment with a little workstation that had no air conditioning. And I used to have to get out work in coffee shops to be comfortable a lot of the time. And eventually, after meeting my girlfriend, Paulina, I started spending a lot of time with her, working at her place, and eventually moved in with her. Conocí a Lucho por medio de una app. Este, nos escribíamos por ahí, platicamos como por alrededor de un mes, y al final se decidió invitarme a salir. Me invitó a tomar un café después de que yo salía de trabajar. Nos vimos en un café que está aquí en Guadalajara, cerca de Avenida Chapultepec, en el Terrible Juan. Ahí fue nuestra primera cita. Empezamos a vernos cada fin de semana, luego entre semana, y pues, enos aquí seis años después. Cuando Lucho me comenta lo que hace, pues vienen como mis preguntas y creo que son las clásicas de oh, ¿y eso cómo funciona? ¿Y la gente compra eso? En ese momento, cuando llego a la primera cita, él estaba en su computadora y estaba trabajando en un proyecto, entonces comenzó a enseñarme el proyecto en el que estaba trabajando. Todo ese tema lo manejaba como un poco más sencillo, empezaba como con camisetas, hacía pósters. I continued to work on that. 
until a point where I said, I think I'm going to need to take it to another level. What I did was I decided I needed to create more detailed artwork. And specifically, I was going to try some banknote style designs. I made one that I called it the currency independence dollar. I published it on Twitter. All of a sudden I had this gallery asking if they could sell the art on like a very nice format that was like kind of a, the price, the price point was a lot higher than anything that I had sold. We sold an edition of the currency independence dollar design on metal panels. Then we sold another edition on paper prints. And then I decided that I would create another certificate styled artwork in the same dimensions, which was very successful. I think uh, also sold out. One of the things that I've done throughout my, my entire progression as an artist is that once I feel like I have successfully executed a visual style, I don't decide that I want to do that for the rest of my life. And I move on to actually something different. I move on to the next thing. When I have this guy telling me, Hey, can you do another one? That's like this. And I think, well, I've already said that and I've already done that and I I've already finished it and I'm actually working on something else. Let me show you what I'm working on. And they kind of start to say like, oh, I'm not so sure about that. And maybe it won't be as successful. Why don't you just go back to the banknote thing? And I thought like, well, yes, I enjoy the banknote. I like making the banknote. I know the people like the banknote and I can always make the banknote when I want to make the banknote. But right now I don't want to make the banknote. So I decided that I was going to focus on creating what I wanted to create. And I was going to bring that over to my website and I was going to work on hopefully creating a, a base of collectors as strongly as this gallery had one day. I was actually operating as Hodel Crypto. I was creating my art with that uh, tagline in, in all the artworks. As I started focusing more and more only on Bitcoin, what I felt like was missing and I hadn't seen at that point was a representation of Satoshi Nakamoto, the creator of Bitcoin, that kind of kicked off this whole Bitcoin movement, this, this uh, digital revolution in money. So I thought to myself, well, maybe I can do something with this. And I thought, well, Satoshi is anonymous. So what I can do is I can use the anonymous Guy Fox mask I can kind of restyle it, just redraw it with a couple minor modifications. And I can put a Bitcoin logo on the forehead, like in the, the third eye uh, region. And I can use that as an icon for Bitcoin. And it can be the mask that I put over this character of the idea of Satoshi Nakamoto. So for me, it was like an empty vessel where I could fill with my ideas and I started kind of filling um, these ideas with with this imagery of Satoshi. I really ran with it and I used it. I'm still to this day, I use it across um, a lot of my, my works, if not most of them. I also had started doing some interviews and articles that people wanted to cover my art. How are you doing today, Lucho? I'm doing well, doing well. We're here at Lucho Paletti stands. Lucho, say what's up to the people, man. It's great meeting you. Hola, amigo. ¿Qué, qué tal? Buenos, como, buenos días, buenas tardes. Pessoal, tô aqui com Luco Poletti. Lucho Poletti, aprendi a falar hoje, certo? So we're my buddy Lucho Poletti's booth, and this stuff is looking fire, man. I love his Bitcoin art. And they asked me what my name was. So I said, well, should I tell them my name? Should I decidedly say I'm anonymous and I'm not going to give you my name and I go under the pseudonym? And I quickly decided that I wanted to share who I was, uh, my name. I don't have anything to hide. I haven't scammed anyone or started anything up that, uh, that I have to run away from. So my name, I decided to, to 
rebrand myself as Lucho Poletti. Yes, my my birth name is Luis Poletti. Uh, Lucho is actually something that comes from my corporate lives. The thing about working for a liquor company is that they do a lot of uh, drinking and uh, <laughs> like after work activities. So I would attend these things and I guess I would loosen up and uh, I would start dancing or I would start uh, maybe being a little more outgoing and uh, just enjoying the, the time. And at some point, one of my coworkers approached me like on a Monday morning and they were like, man, you're like, you're like a different person at, at these like work gatherings. And I was like, what do you mean? And they're like, yeah, like, so you're, you're Luis in the office and I'm going to call you Lucho when, when we have parties. Yeah, I just, I, I went back to that time when people called me Lucho and I said, well, I guess I'm not that corporate guy anymore, so I could just be Lucho forever now. So, uh, so I chose Lucho. I got luchopoletti.com. I changed my, my Twitter handle to at Lucho Paletti, my Instagram. I started uh, using a digital signature that I would place normally like on the bottom right hand side of the designs. And the first images uh, that come to mind that I created in early 2019 were the Dr. Satoshi's orange pill uh, poster, the Sound Money, Sound Mind poster, which was part of that same Cure What Ails You series, um, the Cure What Ails You original poster, and the 2.1 quadrillion uh, Satoshi's banknote that was modeled after the uh, Zimbabwe, a hundred, a hundred trillion dollar banknote. Durante la pandemia que hubo recorte de personal en el trabajo, me tocó recorte. Para ese entonces, este Lucho estaba bastante rebasado con la, con el tema del trabajo, entonces me pide que lo ayude con la parte del trabajo, con todo lo del tema de este de la tienda digital, ayudarle a organizar la tienda, a organizar también todos los temas de el arte físico, acomodar ediciones, ver a quién se han enviado, cuáles están disponibles, cuáles no. Llegó Pau, Pau puso un orden aquí a los dos, ¿no? Porque tanto yo acá en el taller tenemos bastantes producciones y ella puso un orden. Pau es pues Pau. <risa> Tiene que estar a un lado del otro. Y, y, y viceversa, ¿no? Son los dos un complemento ahí. Tenía una página en aquel tiempo. Se llama El Changarro. Llegó un mensaje. Soy Lucho. Se presentó. Estoy interesado en ir a imprimir. Arte fino. Ah, perfecto. No, pues, y resulta que pues, conozco a Lucho. Lucho la persona más sencilla y talentosa. Vamos. Yo vi su obra y dije, pues aquí hay potencial. Le recomendé ciertos papeles. Comenzamos creo que con un Matt Fever. 200 gramos de la marca Hanne Müller, alemán. Y yo le insistía pues en que imprimiéramos con algodones. Pues va así, boom, vamos a hacer algodón. El algodón es, tiene una textura, una... No se transmite, ¿no? Vamos, volúmenes y, y este... El cromatismo también es incom incomparable, vamos. Creo que nos enamoró a los dos, tanto él, la solución que damos, y yo estoy enamorado de su chamba, ¿no? Here we have run on the banks. So in early 2019, I started really taking notice of the digital art movement through NFTs and took a good look at the platforms where art was being made and sold. And I noticed that Super Rare and Known Origin, which were the leaders at the time, had a lot of crypto themed artwork and crypto artists who were making art actually about cryptocurrency and money. A lot of Bitcoin logos, Ethereum logos, and just the artists that loved crypto who were making art about it. And naturally I wanted to get involved. And my artwork was primarily created to make prints and posters. So I started thinking, how can I make my art more digitally native? And the natural first thought was just to start animating my art. So I started working on stop frame animations and created them into GIFs. And those were the first artworks that I minted on the Super Rare platform. Los primeros videos de Lucho eran como una especie de stop motion que hacía la, la ilustración y luego movía un poquito las imágenes 
y ya la tomaba. Entonces volvía otra vez a mover otro poquito las imágenes y ya guardaba esa imagen hasta que formaba un video. Y esos fueron sus primeros NFTs. A ya llegar a animaciones más avanzadas con las que tiene ahora, encontrar a una persona que le pudiera ayudar a llevar estas ideas que él tenía en su cabeza y plasmarlas ya en una obra digital, en un video, en sonido, en diálogos, pues sí fue un super cambio de lo que él estaba haciendo en un principio hasta esta parte ya de, de su trabajo y del convertirse en el artista que también es ahora. I posted like some uh, job description or something, <laughs> like I posted in Indeed of like someone, actually what I was looking for initially was someone to help teach, someone who knew how to animate, uh, to teach me how to animate. That's when I found Luis Carlos, who is like the guy who helps me with all my animation. Uh, well, since I had some experience as an um, animation teacher at the university here in Mexico, Uh, I said, okay, yeah, it's uh, something I can do, something I'm good at, so yeah, let's uh, give it a try. I've been working for 15 years now as an animator and as a filmmaker. At first we used some of uh, Lucho's pieces, mainly as an excuse to teach uh, Lucho how to uh, animate. But eventually we started coming up with these um, interesting concepts, uh, interesting ideas, and eventually our work workflow uh, evolved in such a way that it made more sense for Lucho to focus on uh, coming up with these uh, creative ideas and Uh, making actual visual elements out of these ideas and for me to take those elements and start moving them around and mating them and yeah, bringing Lucho's ideas to life. Lucho has always used uh, like the latest technology to express his art uh, in different and creative ways. Uh, he went through augmented reality, through AI, uh, using voxels, projections, and using all these uh, variety of tools to express himself in new and creative ways. It has been a very interesting and very challenging experience working with Lucho, uh, taking a peek at this uh, endless Bitcoin rabbit hole and finding out how far does it go. There was a lot of stuff that like uh, we worked on and it was kind of like me trying to figure out like how are some ways that uh, Luis Carlos and I would work together on projects. I was presented the opportunity to do a drop on Nifty Gateway. And this was an, a new step for me as an artist where I wanted to create a deliberate collection and release it all at the same time create a storytelling animation for each of those pieces and also design sound um, to accompany the animation that I, I guess opens like a new chapter where I focused a lot of my best work on the Nifty Gateway platform. Uh, my name is Matthew. Some folks may know me as Nifty Time creative lead here at Nifty Gateway. Been here for about three and a half years at this point, which funny enough, when I started, like one of my first uh, artists that I worked with and put a production together with was actually Lucho. So Lucho has released a number of collections. Uh, I've helped produce a number of those. The first collection that I worked with Lucho on was back in 2021, I believe March. Uh, or April, right around that period. And it was the Super Satoshi collection that we released on Nifty. Step back in time a little bit. I collected Lucho earlier. I think I first came across his work uh, back in like 2019 or 2020 on Super Rare, like browsing around and known origin. And the style of art that I'd come to know uh, Lucho for mostly was his, the, the Bitcoin propaganda style. His first collection was more in that kind of propaganda style vein. Uh, and then the, the second collection that he ended up releasing, which I believe was titled 
Novus Moneda Sanclorum, if I'm butchering that Latin right, he started to jump into a, a more cinematic or like detail rich style. And that was the style of Super Satoshi, actually more of a, like a, a, cart, a comic book inspired style. And he was expanding the, the universe that has kind of always existed around his art, right? Bitcoin has means so much to so many people, presents such power, right? When wielded properly. And it has its own kind of universe of characters that are good or bad. And with Super Satoshi, he finally made manifest that world uh, in his art and added animation and just rich details. And yeah, it was quite a collection to work on. And, and the success that he experienced with that, I think, confirmed like what he enjoyed through the creation process that allowed him to create all the subsequent collections that we ended up uh, releasing on FD Gateway from Cypher Deus, uh, the seven levels of Fiat Inferno, um, and then most recently the, the Bitcoin uh, movement that we just released uh, last month, a couple of weeks ago, actually. My latest project titled The Bitcoin Movement is another milestone, I guess I could say, uh, something that I haven't tried before. And I used an opportunity um, where I felt I had created a large body of work and I thought, well, maybe I can combine all the elements from the animations uh, I've created to date and use them to tell a story that combines them all about the Bitcoin movement as a whole and also sort of reflect my experience to date as a participant in the Bitcoin movement, as an artist, kind of going through all the emotions I've had, all the research I've done, all I've learned and put into my artworks and, and kind of combine that all in a way that tells stories about the Bitcoin movement and helps me sort of like do a recap of everything I've created to date and also sort of uh, glorify those pieces, like sort of as a way of saying like, hey, this is my art. I'm proud of my art. I stand behind my art. And so much so that I can even use my art as raw material to create new artworks that, that tell a new story. With the conclusion of the Bitcoin movement, I can now move on to create new artwork. And uh, I think it, it sort of uh, closes a chapter as an artist where I said what I wanted to say for the past four years, five years. I've recapped that in the Bitcoin Movement series. And now I'm going to move forward and then continue to, to see what else I have to say about the, uh, the monetary uh, future of the world. So I'll be continuing on my mission to spread the message that Bitcoin is better money through my art. I know that there's a lot of people out there that they're skeptical still to this day about Bitcoin. Um, they see it as this, you know, very volatile, wild roller coaster ride. Um, and to all those people, I would say that you should definitely not sit on the sidelines for too long and, and let this pass by like another 10 years. Um, I think that you should get to reading, get to understanding and give it enough time and consideration to make your own decision whether you think that it's a good technology for storing value for yourself personally or whether you rather just, uh, you know, be guaranteed to lose because, because you're saving in dollars or another national currency. Um, so give that some thought, give that some uh, consideration, and um, I'll be here making more art, spreading the message that Bitcoin's better money. And if anyone has any, any ideas for how I can better spread the message of better money through my art, I'd be really happy to hear them.